Yeah, thank you very much for this opportunity that I could share to you the, the message that's been burning in my heart. Uh, I entitled the message, The Valley of Trials. I think every one of us are having trials in their life. And this is taken from the book of James, chapter, two, uh, chapter 1, verse 2 to 11. So if you, have, if you have your Bible with you, your laptop, your iPod, your iPhone, please turn to James, chapter 1, verse 2 to 12. It says there, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of any kind. For it is the testing of your faith that will develop perseverance. And it says perseverance must finish its goal for you to be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. In verse 5 it says, if any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who gives it generously to all without finding fault. But when you ask, you should believe and not doubt. Because when you doubt, you'll be like the waves of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. That man should not expect to receive anything from God. Because such man is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. And in verse 9 it says, Believers in humble circumstances should take pride in your high position. The rich should take pride in their humiliations, since they will pass away like wildflowers. The sun rises in scorching heat and, and withers the plant. Its blossom falls, its beauty is destroyed. In this way, the rich men will fade away even while they go out doing their business. But this is the verse that I really like. In verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trials, for when they stood the test, they're going to receive the crown of life, which the Lord has prepared for those who love him. What a wonderful passage that the Apostle James has written for the people like you. It's written for Christians, for those who believe in Christ, for those who accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. We know that God used our troubles. God used all the trials that we are facing. God used the, the, the problems, the difficulties that we have to test our faith and to toughen our faith. We sometimes feel that everything seems to be lining up against us. When things seem to be not going according to what we plan. We experience in problems, trials, challenges in life. But this is the time that we are going to be tested, that our faith will be tested and determine whether our faith is real. What we are going to see on the outside, whether our faith is real, should be the same if our faith is real on the inside. And this is what I'm going to share to you this morning. There are three points that I would like to share to you. That if our faith is real, in our faith is work, what happens in our life? Our faith is strengthened. When our faith is tested, when experience difficulties in life, when experience problems that we think we cannot bear, our faith is strengthened. In, in, in verse 2 it says, Consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of any kind. It says when ever you face trials, not if you face trials, which means to say that 100% every one of us here in this room today is going to have problems in life. No one will be exempted because every one of us is going to have one. That is for sure. And it says whenever you face trials, in the original translation, in the New King James Version, it says, whenever you fall into trials. There is a definite that we are going to face, we are going to fall into trouble, we are going to, uh, to fall into to problems in our lives. And we know that those kind of problems, those kind of troubles are unavoidable and we cannot predict when it will be coming. Nobody will say, today I'm going to look for trouble, because you don't need to. Because trouble, Mr. Trouble is going to look for you. Problems is going to come and knock at your door, and he will be there to greet you. And Apostle James also mentioned that we are going to face trials, trials of many kinds. So the problems that we are going to face, the troubles that we are going to face, 
are going to come in different sizes, shapes, and colors. It will come in different forms. It will attack us in different areas of our lives, be it physical. We can be inflicted with severe disease. Or it can be emotional. You can be depressed. Or spiritual. You can be burned. But most importantly, every one of us, in every area of our life, are going to experience problems, are going to be tested, are going to be tried. Because that is the reality of our life. No one among us here will ever say that I will be exempted from having problems in my physical being. Because once you say that, we can say that we are not saying the truth. Because every one of us is going to experience problems, trials, in order to test our faith. But what's funny about this is the Apostle James is saying, after you definitely you're going to face trials, you're going to face trials of different kinds. He said, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Isn't that very unusual? What if you're going to say to someone who just lost his husband, or her husband, sorry, I, I will be very particular with this, who is going to lost her husband and say, hi, sister, consider it pure joy for losing your husband. Or somebody who has been knocked off from work with five kids, young kids, with no source of income, and you're going to uh, come and tell him, consider it pure joy, my brother, whenever you face trials. Sometimes we cannot understand what the verse is telling us, but that is what we would like to find out. Why did the Apostle James says, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of any kind? James is telling us that trials, troubles, and tribulation will test the toughness of our faith. You might, know, you might not know when it's coming or how or where it will be coming from, but one thing we, are, we, we know is that what it will do to us, what those tests and trials and tribulations and problems and hardship and pain will do to us. We know that God is going something in us. Because those trials, those problems, those heartaches that we face are tests that we need to, to take. And do you remember that when every whenever we, we, we experience or whenever we face tests, there are questions that you need to answer. All of us have finished school. Or not all of us had finished school. Some of us are still going to school. But in every situation when you have a test, you need to face questions. And when, we are when our faith is being tested, when our faith is being trialed, the Lord is asking us two basic questions. Do you really, do you trust me? Do you really trust me? When you've been laid off from job and you don't have money to, to spend for, for the food on the table, or when you are all the while, all, all the while being very healthy and then suddenly you receive the diagnosis from your doctor that you are inflicted by this severe disease of cancer. The Lord is asking us, do you really trust me? That's the first question that we need to answer. And I think most of us will say, yes, Lord, we trust you. And the next question that he might ask us is, how much? How much do you trust me? How much do you trust me? Because during tough times, because during tough times, we need to continue to trust God no matter what. No matter what happens, we need to continue to persevere. Because we know that during those times, that's the time that our faith will be strengthened, that our faith will start to grow and to develop. Trials, trials will test the toughness of our faith. Because in verse 3 it says, because you know that the testing of your faith will develop perseverance. And with, with testing, one thing that we know about testing is that testing is something that uh, we have to prove whether it is original or it's a fake. 
So when we, 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 we read the word, the testing of our faith, the, the test that's happening here is just to test whether our faith is true or not, whether our faith is, is, uh, is original, is real. In, in uh, verse 4, it says, Let the perseverance finish its work for us to be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. We know that for us who are parents here, for us who are raising children, we believe that what we want for our children are to grow and to mature. That is our prayer for our children, for my two lovely daughters. That is our daily prayer for them to grow and to mature and to be complete, not lacking in anything. And I think that is what God, our Father, also has for us who are called his children. And that's who we are, a children of God. He wants us to grow and to mature. He wants to develop our faith and to study our faith as we continue to live our life here on earth. Let me tell you this. During good times, our, our, our faith will never be tested. During good times, we cannot experience the growth of our faith. Our faith will, ne will never be strengthened. During good times, it doesn't test our faith. It is only during bad times. When you experience the most painful experience in your life, and you're able to manage, you're able to, to pursue, you're able to hang on, that's the time that we can say that our faith has been tested. You know, faith is like, uh, this is always an example that was given to me. You know, Pete, your faith is like muscle. You've been lifting weights. And the more you strain your muscle, the heavier the load that you bring forth and lift, the stronger your muscle will be. Sorry, I cannot show you my muscle at the moment, but the strain, the, 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 the heavy, the, the, the weight that you, you lift, the stronger your muscle. This is the same as with our faith. The tougher, the harder, the more difficult problems you overcome, the more faith you develop. But you know what, what what's, uh, things that happen to us sometimes? When we encounter trouble, when we have problems in our life, what we want is always to run away from it. Who don't want to run away from their problems? I think most of us think that if we can run away, it can avoid problems. That's all that what we want. But sometimes, you know what? God is telling us that, hey, that's not what you want to do. I want you to shoulder on, to hang on, to toughen up, and carry through and overcome this problem that you've been facing. Because this is only through these problems, through these trials and tribulations that you're facing, that your faith is going to develop. And this is why trials, problems, will strengthen our faith. This is why we are starting to understand why the Apostle James said, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because when trials come into our life, we need to realize that sometimes we don't know what or we don't know why it's happening. But sometimes we just need to know that God is doing something for us, that God is some doing something to us, that if we allow God, if we allow him to work in our lives, he will use those tests, those trials in our life in order for us to strengthen our faith, in order to, to toughen our faith. So trials will make our faith better it will strengthen our faith. Because sometimes you might not feel good. You might not feel joyful whenever you are facing trials. But when you find the cause, the product, the fruit of what you're going through, that's the time you're going to find joy. One thing that we need to understand is during those times when we are facing problems in our life, when we are having difficulties in our life. If we are going to value 
comfort rather than our character, if we're going to value money rather than our maturity, those troubles, those problems will shy us away or drive us away from God. But if you are going to, to come to God and say, oh God, what, uh, what's happening to me is just a testament of your greatness and of your, love, your love for me. So I will value more the character that you will develop rather than the comfort that I have. That my maturity will be more important than the money that I'm going to earn. Or my, my faith will be more, more important than the feelings that I have. Or my walk with you is far more important than the materials and the physical things that I'm going to accumulate. Then you can consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know that God is doing something in you. So when our faith is real and our faith works, our faith is going to be strengthened. Number two, our focus is going to change. When we are facing difficulties in our lives, when we are facing problems that seems to be difficult for us to overcome, Apostle James said, our focus is going to change. Let us read in, in verse 5, it says, If any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God, who give it generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. So we are going to look, what, what, what does uh, the Apostle James mean, to the, mean with this verse? Because he's just talking about uh, trials in life. He's just talking about our problems. And then suddenly... He said, yeah, ask wisdom. We know that trials that we face make us trust more in God and strengthen our faith. But one thing is that when we are under trials, when we are facing problems in our lives, what's the first question that you ask? Why? Why is this happening to me? Why did this happen to me? I was all well all good, doing my exercise every morning, and then suddenly, one morning I was coughing out blood. Why? Why is this happening to me? And that's basically the, the reason why the, uh, the Apostle James says, in that occasion you need wisdom. Because you cannot, you cannot find wisdom un, uh, apart from God. You just need to ask wisdom to, from where it's, its source. God is the only source of wisdom. You cannot find wisdom in universities. Yes, you can find knowledge. You can go to QUT, UQ, Griffith University. You can read books. You can listen to podcasts. You can get knowledge, but never you will find wisdom because wisdom is only from God. That's exactly why we need wisdom. If we are facing trials, we don't know why it's happening to us, that's the time for us to come to God and ask for wisdom. Job chapter 28, verse 20 to 23, it says, Where then does wisdom come from? God understands the why to it, and he alone knows where it dwells. So during those times, during those times of difficulties, during those times when we are burdened with lots of troubles, we need to see things happening in our life in God's viewpoint. We need to keep our focus on God rather than focusing onto the problems, onto the trials that we are facing. That's why when trials come in our lives, it should change our focus. Instead, onto the trials, it should change our focus onto God. This is what James is saying. When we are getting into tough times, when we are experiencing those difficult problems, if our faith is real, our faith works. 
Because during those times, you won't say to God, God, take away this problem. God, rescue me from this problem. God, take me away these trials that's happening into my life. What you're going to say is, God, reveal to me what you are saying unto me, what you are doing in me. Because when we are, when we are in trouble, we change our focus to God. We always put our focus onto God, not on the troubles that is hounding around us, but keep our focus on God. Apostle James is too wise that he gave us two great examples in verses 9 to, to 11, when he said this beautiful example of a poor man and a rich man. He said that believers, in humble circumstances, should take pride on their high positions. This is talking about a man who is poor, poor, living in poverty, no money, no subsistence. He said, believers in humble circumstances should take pride in their high position. The rich should take pride in their humiliations since they will fade away like wildflowers. What a great example. Because he said that the sun rises in scorching heat will wither the plants and the blossoms will fall and the beauty will be destroyed. This is what is going to happen to a rich man who will fade away even though they're, going, even though they're doing their business. James is talking about the rich man and the poor man a man who had no money, a man who had lots of money, a man who is living in poverty, a man who is living in prosperity. He is talking about this man that when problem comes, when problem comes, he will be saying, all the money, whether I have money or I don't have money, what I need truly is God. In the next slide, you, you will see. Whether you have a lot or little, you are poor or rich, you're in poverty or prosperity. When you are in tough times, you need to realize that you don't need money. What we need is God. And this is wisdom. That is wisdom. I would like to share to you a story about the old man who won a lotto, one million lotto prize. The problem with this man, this old man, is just he is sick. He has heart problem. So the family is very adamant to tell him the news that he won one million dollars in a lottery. They have a big problem how they're going to break the news. So they employ the pastor. They talk to the pastor, hey pastor, we have a big problem. Our father won, let's call him Mr. Jones, won the prize, one million uh, dollars in lotto. But we cannot tell him the pro we, can't, we, we cannot tell him because we are afraid that he might have a heart attack because he has a heart problem. So can you help us? Because we know that you are a very good communicator. You know, pastors sometimes are very good communicator. Yeah. I think you might be able to help us break the news to our father. And the pastor obliged and said, okay, yes, I will help you. So one morning, he passed by and stopped uh, on, onto the house of this old man. He saw him sitting in the lounge and with one pipe on the hand and coffee on the other hand and say, hi, Mr. Jones, good morning. Yeah, pastor, oh, what's up? What brought you here this morning? Oh, just in the area, I just passed by. I just want to say hello and see how you're doing. So after a short chat, the, the, the pastor said, hi, Mr. Jones, for example, just suppose, just suppose you won one million dollars in a lottery. What will you do? And the old man said, oh, one million dollar? Yeah, just suppose you won one million dollar in, in a lottery. Mr. Jones said, oh, I will give every single dollar to your church. 
Do you know what happened? The pastor died of heart attack. <laughs> okay. All right. The point I'm making in this, trouble has, has, has way, I'm not that pastor. Eh? I will love to receive one million dollar. Trouble has way of changing our focus. And bad times usually will draw or drive us more unto God. Because sometimes we cannot handle, we are going to say, Lord, it seems that I cannot handle more of these problems. I cannot do any, my money cannot buy me out of this, even my education, my knowledge, my intelligence cannot buy me out of this. But one thing I'm very sure, Lord, I will go into keep on holding and trusting and believing that you are my Lord, that you are my Savior, that you are the one who's going to deliver me on this occasion. So I keep on uh, putting my focus onto you because we know that I, I know that I know that you are the one who's going to deliver me, who's going to get me out of this. That is wisdom. Recognizing that it is only the Lord, our, the Lord Jesus Christ, he is the only answer to all our trials, to all our troubles, to all our problems. And when you try to understand that, that is what wisdom is all about. That's why James is asking, if you any of you lack wisdom, you should ask God. And he is going to give it unto you. He is going to let you find out the very reason why those troubles, problems, in tribulation is happening into your life. Number three point. What will happen when all those troubles and trials, problems and difficulties in life come to us? Our future is blessed. Verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, for they, when they stood the test, they are going to receive the crown of life, which the Lord, our Savior, has prepared for those who love him. What James is saying here is, there is unbelievable indescribable blessings waiting in each and every one of those who suffered, of those who had trialed, of those who experienced great problems in their life, who did not quit, who did not get angry or bitter in their life, who continued to persevere. Apostle James is saying that there is a great blessing awaiting for you. Because despite all the troubles that you face, you remain on your faith. Your faith continues to hold and focus your eyes onto Jesus, who is the author and perfecter of our faith, the Lord, our God, our Savior. Every one of us experienced tests when we were in school. Did you have tests when you were in school? I think every one of us have tests. And when I was in medical school, this is one thing I really, really hate. Every Friday lunchtime. Because every Friday lunchtime, during my time in medical school, there is what we call plating exam. Plating exam is for 30 minutes, they're going to pick up questions from the previous week, from that week that you studied. And they're going to give you for sometimes 20, 30 questions. You don't know what to study. You just need to sit there. That's the most difficult Friday lunchtime that I ever had in our life, or most of the time during our school time. Because soon after, you're, in, you're not finished with your lunch yet they're going to post your scores. And you're going to see your score, whether you pass or you fail. So I don't like it. And I think, I think every one of us don't like tests. Who likes tests? Who likes tests in school? Ah, she's the only one who loves tests. Yeah, but yeah, in our life, we are going to experience tests. 
we're going to have experience, we are going to experience tests in our life. And I think one of the things that we need to, rec to, to understand is some of us is going to have a test this afternoon in our life. Some of us might experience a test tomorrow. Or one thing we hate is the pop-up quiz that you can have next week. You don't know what's going to happen, then suddenly this Mr. Trouble is knocking at your door. We don't like that. We don't like tests. But do you believe that those tests, what we are talking about this morning, is coming to us to make us better? To make our faith strengthen? To make our faith grow? So I would like to change that attitude of uh, our mental attitude against test. The test comes for us for a purpose. And that is for us to be able to, 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 uh, to, to grow in our faith, to, to develop and to mature in our faith. That we are going to, to let other people see that we are truly the, the true sons and daughters of God. That whatever circumstances are facing or, or, or life uh, difficulties that we face, we are going to hang on, we are going to shoulder on, we are going to continue to have our faith and focus unto the Lord. That is what we are going to expect for those who are going to continue to persevere in the Lord. Now I want you to hear this. Real faith says, when everything comes, or when everything seems to be running against you, when all the things that happen into your life seems to be uh, tough and difficult and hurtful, you know, real faith will say, no matter what is happening to me, no matter what, uh, how much pain I'm going to suffer, I'm going to continue to, to trust you, Lord. I'm going to continue to obey you. I'm going to continue to attend the church. I'm going to continue to pray and to read your Bible and to worship you. This is what real faith is all about. That no matter how, how painful or heartbreaking you, your experiences is, we are going to continue to hold on unto our faith. We are going to continue to, to love the Lord and to trust Him. We are going to continue our praises and our thanksgiving. And James is saying that because you have done that, you are going to receive the crown of life that God, that the Lord has promised for those who persevere, for those who continue to love him despite of all the things that's happening in their lives. What is that crown of life? Do you know that, Pastor Mike? I don't know. But one thing I know is that crown of life is much, much better than the biggest and the greatest gift that I ever received here on earth. It is entirely incomparable. That crown of life that the Lord has promised for those who persevere is much better than the gift that I have received here on earth. I would like to show you one picture, picture of a pearl. Do you know how pearl is being made of? Pearl has a very fascinating history. Do you know how pearl is um, made? From oyster. You know, oyster is a very, uh, it's a mollusk. It's one of, of the uh, creation that has a very sensitive skin. So every time an irritant comes into the skin, it causes lots of pain and heart to the mollusk, to the, to the oyster. So God has gifted the oyster with this beautiful substance called mother, no? Nutter, knocker, knocker. Cold substance called knocker. We were watching this at YouTube last night. So, with my two girls. So, the oyster is, is uh, gifted with this beautiful substance called knocker. And it released knocker to cover the irritant. And it continued to release knocker to cover the irritant. Until the point that that irritant 
is going to become like pearl, where it costs no more pain, costs no more hurt. And basically, pearl are conceived by irritation and born by adversity. There is no other jewel, diamond, rubies, or silver, that has a fascinating history as pearl. Pearl is healed wound. It is a wound that has covering on it. One of the most precious jewel here on earth with a very fascinating history. Why did I mention about pearl? Let me uh, bring you to the last, uh, the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation. In the book of Revelation, it talks about gates. What are those gates made of? Hey? Made of gold? Yeah, the footpath are made of gold. But the gates are made of per you know, those, those pearly gates. They are made of pearly gates. Why did God make it pearly gates, not iron, not titanium, or not a steel or concrete? You know why? The first thing that you're going to walk into when you walk into heaven, you're going to enter in the pearly gates because those are the gates that were formed from your hearts, from your heartaches, from your pains, from your trials, from your troubles, from your tribulation. Because all of us who by the grace of God gets there. God will look in each and every one of us who overcome the trials, who persevere under tribulations and troubles and hardship and heartaches. We are going to receive the crown of life that God has given us. When we walk in, God will tell us, All the troubles that you went through, all the tears that you have shed, all those times when you think, I was not there, I was always there with you. I was always there with you. And he will be telling us, by the way, Pete, do you see that pearl on the trowel? You check it. Your name is written onto that pearl. Your name is written unto that pearl. You know, because there are lots of people who are going to walk into that gates, beaten, battered, blooded and bruised, of trials and tribulations, of problems in life, but they remain their faith unto the Lord. They persevere. They continue to hang on. They did not let it go. They continue to focus onto the Lord. The Lord is saying, when you walk into that pearly gates, I'm going to meet you and hand you. In one hand is a crown of blessing, and on the other hand, a crown of life. Because no matter what happened unto you, you remain your faith. You did not give up. You did not quit. You continue to attend the church. You continue to read your Bible. You continue to worship the Lord. You continue to serve the Lord. You continue to obey the Lord. God is saying, what you have on earth are tests and trials, problems, and heartaches. But you know what? Look what I ha have for you instead because you have passed the test. A crown of life and a crown of blessing that is specially for you. 
because you passed the test. You persevere under trials. You did not give up. You remain in the faith. Praise the Lord.